Need a pen. Yeah. Yeah. Back. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you bring that on to the bin of pens? pens? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so the main goal for today is to lay a foundational backdrop when it comes to the food first and foremost. And then from there, we build. This is most like the skeleton of what everything we build upon, regardless of what version or standard or if I'm fasting, if I'm not, if I'm doing this, if I'm trying to gain, build. All those things are additions. But the first thing first is to understand that some of the fundamental basics that come across the food, but also who you are, regardless of what your goals are, these things matter. And these are the structure of what all everything else is built upon. Whether you're talking keto, whether you're talking intermittent fasting, whether you're talking all these terms or phrases they throw out, all that's all good and well. But if you don't understand the foundational part of it, it doesn't mean anything. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, um, I, always, I call this from fat to fuel. So basically, many times we're trying to change our physique, there's some fat we're trying to get rid of, some muscle we're trying, muscle we're trying to build. There's something that we're trying to change aesthetically, composition, so on and so forth. One of our major goals that most people have is trying to take the fat that's on your body and get rid of it in some way, shape, or form and get more fit along the way. So you're trying to turn that fat into fuel. That's all stored fat really is. It's fuel in a body that's stored away. We all have different body fat levels and some people store fat easier than others, so on and so forth. But um, anybody can turn their body into a better fat burning machine. Everybody can. It all the, it, the, amount, the amount of work that's determined for the person is specific to the person. We all have our own genetic predispositions. Well, you're not locked into them, but you can adjust and shift things over time with your activity and, th and things along those lines, lifestyle, food, habits, but you have to play the cards you're dealt. What I mean by that is you can complain about what, what, how the other person just do one, two things, their body changes. If that's not your story, who cares? Here's a deck of cards. There's 52 cards in the deck, right? I'm going to deal you some cards. I'm going to do you cards, do you cards. You guys aren't going to have the same identical cards. Not going to happen. Everyone's not going to have an ace. Everyone's not going to have a king. Some Y'all both may have two. You know what I'm saying? The deck is what the deck is. But we play the hand of spades or 500 or whatever you want to play. You can win at the game by playing your cards very, very well. It's not, it's not about the cards you have. It's about how well you play them now. You with me? Mm -hmm. The mental shift I want us all to have is not to, not to play the victim, but to be the victor. And look at your circumstance not as a, a weight or a baggage or what have you, but as an opportunity. An opportunity to figure things out and to do things better for yourself and move forward for yourself. All right? Cool. So, on your worksheet, um, these are, we're going to go through this step by step. And as we're going through, we're going to fill it out as well. So, I want you to leave here with more understanding about your food, about your training, about every point on here. All these points are important. So, first things first, you have principle number one. It says weight loss does not equal fat loss. Okay? And weight gain does not equal muscle gain. These are things I always have to point out because we check numbers here and so on and so forth. Just because you're dropping weight doesn't mean you're dropping fat. That's why you have to check the body fat levels, so on and so forth, things along those lines. And it's um, how you lose your weight, if you're trying to drop weight for that matter, is, is in my opinion, it's more important than the fact that you lose the weight. So say if you're at 200, you're trying to get down to 150. If you get there and a half pass away, you can do a lot of damage to your body, metabolically speaking, hormone imbalances, so on and so forth. That can actually leave you more messed up after you get to your goal than when you were when you started trying to get to your goal. You with me? So losing is one thing, but how you lose is even that much more important in my opinion because that will determine how well you're able to stay there and how hard of a battle you have once you get there to stay there. All right? So, and also weight gain is always muscle gain. Sometimes people say, I start, I start working out, I start getting bigger. More often than not, if that happens, your diet is telling on you. It's very, very, very hard to build and to gain weight and muscle if you're on of being very, very mindful of what you're eating, especially if you, if you know your numbers even further when you talk about your calories. If you're what you call a caloric deficit, it's very hard to gain. Trust me, I've done it extremely strict. It's hard to gain. So if you're gaining, more often than not, something's altering your food. But that's oftentimes the conversation people want to have. Because, oh, well, I started doing some pushes, awesome, arms blew up. Now, <laughs> that just, it doesn't happen. It's not like a night and day type scenario. I wish that was the case. But I, I know, honestly, something's going on in the food because. It's very hard for the body to gain without having enough calories. So if enough calories are there, your body will gain. See, the math is very, very simple in that regard. It needs to have the calories and the nutrients in order to actually be able to build. So if you're not being doing a spot check on your food, mm, you can leave yourself sure. open to... I don't know who's that I was trying to turn my volume off. But um, you leave yourself open to some <laughs> unforeseen circumstances a month down the line or what have you. So the second <laughs> principle is um, excess equals body fat. Excess anywhere on your body, excess in your diet that basically transfers over to body fat. So we're taking in more calories than our body needs. 
think of it like your vehicle. If you go to a gas station, see a gas, you, your gas tank in your car holds 16 gallons, okay? If you try to put more than 16 gallons and you're coming from empty, it's gonna start to spill out, right? It's gonna start, I never, I'm telling you guys ever did it before. I know I did it before when I was trying to pump my gas for the first time on my own. I didn't know what I was doing. I think I was in college. I was that like, yeah, I, 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 I was sitting up. in the car and I'm like, oh, waiting man. for somebody to come out. I'm going, like, going, let's, let's, let's start pouring like crap. But um, on our body, when we take in that excess, it it's, it's spilling out is what we get on our midsection, on our thighs, on our face, on our arms. That's how it spills out on our body when we're getting too much from our diet. So that excess, that's what turns over the body fat. It could be excess protein, it could be excess carbs, it could be excess fat. All those three things can all have, we can have too much of what we eat in whatever form. And we'll talk more specifically about those forms as we move forward. Now that excess needs to be burned, not starved. All right? The excess on our body needs to be burned, not starved. And it's burned by having, by doing what we do here, we're talking about the training, focusing on the food, the cardio, all those elements are what help our body to burn by making our metabolism healthier and healthier. The healthier metabolism, think of your metabolism like a muscle. So it's like a muscle in your quads. They can get stronger. Your metabolism can get stronger as well. So many people say, hey, I have a sluggish metabolism. I can't. It's everything that sits on me. You can get better at doing and at improving that, but it requires work on your end in order to make that happen. You all right, babe? <laughs> um, next up, we have our first thing we're going to do when we, before we get into some of the particulars on the second page is we're going to set up, you see the little sheet right here. You guys can keep your little sheet for yourself as well. And on here, we're going to set up an example of how many times the crash diet that we engage in, the haphazard eating, things along those lines can communicate death to your overall system, which is not a good thing because your body's number one goal and objective is to survive. It does not care about your goals. That's one of the hard truths we have to recognize about ourselves. We have these wants that we have with our body, with our physique. I want to get rid of this. I want to get rid of my stomach, get rid of my thighs, whatever those things are. Those are just wants. Your body only does what it considers to be a need. So you don't get what you want until your body gets what it needs, period. And you can say, oh, it's not fair. I, did, I worked so hard. All that doesn't mean anything. Only thing that matters is, is my body getting what it needs? And if it is, I'm in a better position to get what I want. I'm in a better position to look the way I want with my physique because it's a byproduct of my body responding to the environment I put it in. So it's not just because of my genetics, it's also because of my habits. All right, so take ownership of everything. The more ownership you take, the better position you're in to make the change you want to make. All right, so you got to own it. So on here, this is a classic scenario. I'm not saying this is what everyone does, but a lot of people have done it in, I don't know, over a decade of some change in doing it. You see it happening a lot. And it doesn't do too well overall. So on our, on our sheets, you all see the diagram here. So on average, everyone, man, woman, boy, girl, infant, what have you, has what we call a BMR. BMR stands for basal metabolic rate. BMR for short. All right? So basically what that means is, say you're laying in bed. You do nothing but lay there, blank. And breathe all day. You're gonna burn a certain amount of calories just because your bodily functions, your heart beating, your, your kidneys moving, your blood's being circulated, you breathing, getting oxygen and carbon dioxide moving around. All that stuff burns a certain amount of calories per day, period. And that's what your BMR is. Zero activity, you're doing, you're doing nothing whatsoever. Now you add in, you get up, you go to work out, you go to work, you have these everyday daily activities that you're carrying out on. That's now add to your BMR. And that, at the end of the day, that's called your. Um, I'm not going to write the whole thing out because it's long. TDEE. -E. That stands for Total Daily Energy Expenditure. How much energy do you really expend like an entire day for doing all that you're doing, including the BMR stuff? So that number encapsulates everything. All right? So that number could be, I'm sure you, I'm showing sure it back in nutritional labels you may have seen, what is based on a 2,000 calorie diet. You ever seen that before? Mm -hmm. So we're going to use that just for this, for this example. Say that your TDEE -E equals 2,000 calories, just for simplicity because it's the common number we all know. So here, we have our 2,000 calories. This is, who wants to be the example? Yeah. I see, all right, boom, we're gonna use you. So, so you see, your intake is 2,000 calories. So basically, this is your sweet spot. With, the, with all the activity that you do, with everything you come in and go on, your workouts, your cardio, going crazy, going to work, dealing with all the craziness, on a daily basis, you burn about approximately 2,000 calories. And when you eat 2,000 calories, you don't gain, you don't lose. You're, that's where your body is nice and comfortable there for the most part. Remember, our body loves homeostasis. So in order to get it to move, you gotta apply enough pressure to make it shift because your body loves being where it is right now. So 
We got a 2,000, that's what you're taking in right now. Great. Now, CC says, hey, I'm trying to get ready to send this weight. And I have this wedding coming up in like three weeks. I need to get this 15, 20 pounds off right freaking now because the dress I want to wear, I can't wear, so I got to get it off now. So I go online and there's some new diet. Hey, 15 I don't to know. 20 pounds, that's a <laughs> lot in three weeks. Hey, but those are goals set up all the time. It's air and water. <laughs> Air and water diet. <laughs> so we're doing an air and water diet. Okay, cool. Then there's always a new diet. There's always a new something trying to get you to get this weight off quick and so on and so forth. But again, remember how you get off is one thing, but you're keeping it off is something else. So she does some crash diet, something really crazy. She's really restricted on, restricted on calories. Let's look at the actual numbers. Say, for example, her, whatever the diet she chooses has her only taking in 1,200 1, calories, which is very common. Okay, cool. So now she goes through her first week. She hops on a scale after week one. Cece's down two to three pounds. You excited or not? A little bit. All right, a little bit excited. Cool, cool. Um, so first week she's down three pounds. Ten more to go. Down three there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she goes into week number two, and she's down another. Three. I don't know. Say another three. There we go. And we travel into week number I've done three. I've done this before. <laughs> and um, for some week number three, she hops on a scale. She may have only dropped like zero point two. All right, so now you look, you're unhappy. <laughs> yeah. So she's now unhappy because she's not eating a lot of food by default, and she's feeling she's putting in that work trying to get this weight to get off her basically. So when she starts to plateau a little bit, the common thing people do, as Cece decides to do, is she decides to drop her calories and go further to help push it along because things are tight. All right, cool. So now she goes from a twelve. Say so she goes down to eight hundred. Say so we go down. He said how much? 800 <laughs> calories. Oh my goodness, great. Oh, boom. Again, not uncommon. She so she drops by another 400 calories. She's down to 800 calories now. So now she continues on. She goes into that next following week. She may, she may drop another two or three pounds. Say she drops another three. She's happy because she, she got back to that weight loss. It's coming down off again. And then sometime down the line, she ends up plateauing out a second time. So now she's really frustrated. You know why? She's only eating 800 calories. She's yeah, eating some she's crackers. She can eat two meals a day, day. Yeah. and then water for the rest of the day. So um, she's eating some crackers. She's going <laughs> to get a two, meal here, maybe one meal a day at that. She's the energy to work out. Exactly. There you go. So now she's frustrated because <laughs> she's not. She's like, when I was eating 2,000 calories, at least I was staying, maintaining at least. I wasn't crazy frustrated. I can't even go out and have a couple of cocktails with my friend because the calories <laughs> add up so fast. I can't enjoy things the way I want, wanted to before. So... Let me go back to how I was before, because this is I can live and I can be a little bit happier, okay? So then she gets to whatever weight loss she got, 9 pounds, 9.2, so on and so forth, and then she goes back to this 2,000, right? And then over the course of the next several weeks, months, whatnot, she starts to notice her weight starts to go up and up and up. She gains back the 9.2 or whatever she ended up losing, and she ends up gaining back some more on top of that as well. And now she's really frustrated, okay, what the heck? Now you're frustrated even further, so at some point in time later on, there's going to be another goal, and we have to do the same cycle again. I'm, I'm, I need to get this weight up now. So they do the same cycle again, and then again, and then again. And we wonder why year after year, month after month, or month after month, year after year, I should say, things have tend to get a little bit harder and harder and harder. This cycle is all the time what we refer to as that yo-yo dieting, where you keep doing certain things just for the moment, trying to get a momentary change and shift, but not really getting and rectifying the issue to begin with and then being able to move forward from there. Now, remember when we said she started at 2,000 calories, right? The reason, a simple reason as to why she, your body ends up plateauing at some point in time is, remember how I said your body wants to survive as long as possible, okay? Your body's extremely smart. It's scary how smart your body is. and it will, it will adapt and do whatever it needs to do to make sure it's taking care of itself if you're not gonna take care of it. So. Your body's rocking out with you. You're dropping pounds and pounds and pounds. Your body recognizes your intake is relatively low. You're not getting enough nutrition. You're not getting enough nutrients. So therefore, your body feels threatened. So therefore, your body's okay. If you're not going to take care of me, if I adjust my metabolic rate to match my input, therefore, I'm no longer keep losing weight. Because if I keep losing weight at this rate without the nutrients, I'm going to become deficient, and therefore, I'm going to perish in essence. So your body feels threatened. So therefore, it starts to autocorrect for you because you're not giving it what it needs correctly to begin with. So now. It now adjusts over time down to meet you here, and then it's when you hit that new plateau, all right? And then again, remember she dropped down to 800, another 400. Eventually, your body recognizes, okay, I'm not getting enough, so therefore, let me adjust and recalibrate 
so that I can now level out <laughs> and not keep dropping at this rate. Therefore, I'm not getting enough nutrients. Therefore, my body's not really getting what it needs to do. All these things, again, threaten the overall system of your body. So now, remember at this point in time, CC was frustrated. It's like, yo, I'm not eating anything. Let me go back to what I was doing for the past several years. While I wasn't gaining, wasn't losing, I can at least live my life. But what CC didn't realize was when she went from here and came back to here, she now has a surplus of 1,200. That's a surplus of 1,200 calories now that she's getting, she's taking in now. That she wasn't getting a surplus before. Because now, remember, her metabolism is down, is down here now. It's at 800. It used to be at 2,000. But now it's at 800 to balance things out, basically. So if she eats 800, she won't gain, she won't lose. But now she jumps that up to 1,200. That's 1,200 additional calories every single day that she's taking in without recognizing she's really, she's, now she's significantly overeating. That's like she, her being at her 2,000, and then she jumps to 3,200 overnight. All right? And she's wondering why she's gaining all this weight because all this is now excess. This is way more than what the body needs. And it's anything over about every, every pound of fat about 3,500 calories. So if I double that, that's 24. So three times that's 36. Every three days, technically speaking, looking at another pound, if you, if you lived in a bubble for that matter. Every three days, like another pound, 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 pound being put on. Now, over time, your metabolism can begin to elevate back up if things are done properly, but more often than not, we don't do things properly, so therefore we kind of put ourselves in a bad metabolic state where things tend to be harder necessarily. But this is that classic yo-yo scenario, and oftentimes this is why people end up gaining so much more weight on the back end after they stop their diet, because how they got to their goal was haphazard to begin with. So therefore, once you come off of it, most times you come off of it in a haphazard way too, which is causing more of that damage and wreaks more havoc, and then we just repeat the cycle later, and then again, and then again. And then it's never ending, unfortunately, until you come here, and then you do it different. So that there is how things communicate death to our diet. Now, the bigger thing that most people don't recognize that happens during this mixture of all this is that more often than not, a person loses more muscle than they do fat when they're dropping this weight. So say she dropped 10 pounds over that time period. More often than not, and the reason why we have to track the body fats as people are dropping weight is because say during that time period, she dropped, she dropped 10 pounds excited, but she dropped eight pounds for muscle. I don't spell it right. Yes, yeah. See, uh, there you go. Hey, don't worry about it. We know that me. looks even worse than the first time you spelled uh, it. Uh, uh, there we go. Listen, I go to school for penmanship at all. Um, eight pounds of muscle, and say I was two pounds of fat. Now that there equals ten pounds on the scale. So she was happy because she dropped ten pounds, but she didn't realize that the composition where it came from wasn't in her favor because muscle, by definition, burns more calories per day. And it consumes more calories per day as well. So when your body's in a threatened state and not getting enough calories, your body will get rid of more muscle at a faster rate because it's trying to bridge the gap of how many calories it can save from day to day. Does that make sense? <coughs> you with me? So yeah. it burns muscle before fat. It'll burn more muscle, especially when things aren't done properly. Say if I'm doing a crash diet, more often than not, your protein intake is inadequate. So you're, you're only positioning your body to have to burn through muscle because your body needs protein, which we'll talk about in the next sheet. It needs it to survive the function. So there's so many things your body needs it for. And your body, if it's not getting enough, will literally take the muscle on your body, break it down, and use it for fuel for other metabolic function your body needs to carry up from every single day. That, that stores, that's excess energy. It's, the need isn't the same when it comes to what your body needs to use it for in comparison to your proteins, which is broken down form. It's called amino acids. And your body needs it for so many things. It's scary. All right? And um, so... More often than not, she's lost a lot of muscle here. So now, say she lost eight pounds of muscle. After the crash diet, most times people aren't going to do something real diligent to gain that muscle back. They're not really focusing on gaining that muscle back. So what happens the next time she does this? She loses more muscle. And then the next time she does it again, she loses more muscle. So now over the course of time, she may have lost 15, 20, 30 some odd pounds of muscle from the time she was age 25 to 50, not realizing, and she oh my goodness, my metabolism sucks. I can't eat anything if I eat it. If I look at food, I gain weight. And it seems like to happen. People oftentimes say, oh, when I hit 35, all of a sudden my metabolism starts going down. More often than not, there's internal things that are taking place that you're not being cognizant of that are affecting how the inner world of your body is functioning. But we always look, okay, how do I look in the mirror? All right, good. And that's all we care about sometimes. How am I close fitting? Good. But if you don't take care of the inner world, the outer world is eventually going to reflect what's going on internally. But most of the time we can't identify what threw ourselves off. We haven't been tracking, haven't been doing things in a sound way over time. Or have I just been kind of winging it? All right? So we don't want to wing. We want to be more strategic and be more methodical about that so that we can set ourselves up moving forward to be in a better position, in a better place, long term. And it's doable. It's possible. But it requires us to be diligent now so it can be a little bit more lax later. That's what I prefer to do.
you know, I'm trying to share a little bit later on. <laughs> so that's what we don't want to do. So now we want to try to set a foundation of some other basics and get a snapshot of what we do want to do. So we understand the concept behind the why as to why we want to eat certain things, why we want to structure our days the way you do them. Understanding the why is very important because when you don't understand the why, when you don't really want to do it, in that scenario, you just ain't going to do it. Because, ah, what's the big deal? Because you don't understand the why, you don't understand the imp implications if I don't make the proper decision in this scenario. Not saying so you got to be perfect 100% of the time, but more often than not, think of it like grades. If I'm in school and I have a D average, that's not really passing. Like, you're not going to get, <laughs> you're not going to be able to move on to the next grade. You, 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 you need a C at best. But so you got, we, want, we all might have high standards. Let's elevate. Let's, let's go for that A, or at least a B plus in our activity when it comes to our food and things along those lines. All right, so Beth, on the second page, we got three circles. You all see them? We want to speak the language of our body. And what I mean by that is, is a philosophy or uh, a term of coin called body talk. What I mean by that is everything you do communicates something to your body. How you sleep. What you eat, what you drink, your stress levels, um, what type of food you eat, how you process, all these things, every, your entire environment communicates something to your body as to how safe, unsafe, how happy, all those things are communicated from our actions and our environment that we put it in. So our goal when we're trying to transform the body is to communicate the right signals. That's basically what we have control over. We can't change our genetics per se, but you can influence them, if that makes sense. Okay? We can't change completely our environment, we can't influence them to a degree. So you, you, you have a say so on where your body moves, but you have to position yourself and control the elements that you can control within your power to position your body the best way possible to give you the results that you want to get while your body's getting what it needs. So here, macros. Who's heard the term macronutrients before? Yes. What are, what are our macros? Do we know? It's not like the level of protein and carbs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. fat. Boom, protein, carbs, fat. Those are macronutrients. That's it. So in the first circle, we got a circle on the page, we're going to put a P. P stands for protein. Now you have three lines on there as well. They have, there's multiple purposes for protein, but some of the key ones. When you think of protein, I want you to think regeneration. All right? Now when I say regeneration, I'm talking on so many levels. I'm talking about your fingernails, your hair, um, enzymes being made properly, proper hormone balances. Um, blood cells being made. So many things are required in the body for the use of protein. It's scary. Literally. It's like you, you, the building box of all life. You can function. And that's why your body will actually break down your muscles to get what it needs if your diet is insufficient because it needs it just to function and exist from day to day. Period. That's the reality of it. So, if you're not getting enough, your body will get what it needs. It will take it from you just because you're not, you're not doing your job to get rid of it. To, to, give, to provide it. Second one I want you to think, I want you to think of healing. We're in here. We're putting in work. We're training. We're doing battle ropes. We're doing squats. We're doing all these things, tearing down this muscle. Literally, when you're training, training is a traumatic experience to your body. At a very, very deeper level, it ca it's causing micro trauma to your body, to the muscles. That's where that soreness, the tears, the fibers, all those things happen as a byproduct of your training. So technically, your body looks at training as an attack. And the reason why you get stronger and you have, you have to adapt and keep pushing for more and more weight, more this, more that, is because your body is trying to fortify itself against the next attack. So if you do the exact same thing, the exact same way every single time, it no longer becomes effective. It's like getting a vaccine, basically. Now I've been exposed to this. I can fight this off. I'm okay. So that's why you have to keep pushing in different ways to give your body something new and something different in order to keep stimulating your body to have to respond, to do the things you want it to do. But as, as you do that trauma to the muscles, that's the first thing your body looks to to help your muscles to repair. All right? No matter carbs in the world, your body's going to be able to heal off of because it, it needs amino acids, and that comes from protein. All right? So your body needs to heal up. You got to make sure your protein is adequate for your body. I say for your body within quotation because everyone's body is a little different in regards to how much your body needs. There's no cookie cutter to say, oh, you're a female, you're this age, you're this weight, this is what your body needs. That's not true. Now, there are some general guidelines I want to start from there, and from there we scale up, scale down based upon the person. And a third one we'll put on here as well, energy. You might have to use protein for energy as well. Now on this, a few other things use it for, you are talking about growth, we already talked about cellular repair, um, production of proper neurotransmitter for your brain to function. It needs protein for that. Like literally, it, the, the balance of how we keep our hormones in check and proper signals being sent and whatnot, it requires amino acids for it. So we understand it's insufficient. Maybe your brain can't function properly. 
Um, what else we got? We talk about your hair, your muscles. You know, you go through, wait, my hair goes away, though. My hair's mad long, but it, my diet, it makes a big difference. I think I'm joking. I lie to you not. I started my, my goal before I had lost. My goal was to beat my sister. They started locking the hair before I did my several years. My objective was to beat that because my hair can grow faster because my diet is better than theirs. And literally, I reached that goal. Single robbery never stops. So, yes. And that was one of my main objectives. I lie to you not. So, um, your hair, your tennis, your nails, all these things are made up of protein. Your body needs it in order to survive and to function and for your physical structure to be as sound as possible. Uh, what else? Are you talking about the function? It functions as enzymes or hormones. It's important for all of the cell function. You're talking about your immune system. All these things are predicated on you having enough. So now, the second circle, we got to we'll put a C. C stands for carbs. Now, we have three types of carbs. Anyone know what three they are? Or what the three are? Simple. Right, we got simple. Complex. Complex. What else we got? One more. Combo. No. <laughs> Say combo. <laughs> so the last one uh, we got is called fibers. These are the three type of carb of um, carbohydrates. I guess you're searching on the lines for those. Those aren't for the lines, but it's okay. We got plenty of space on the page. You're good. You're good. You're um. No worries, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but those are three types. So the major difference between the three of them is more so absorption rate, meaning how quickly. When you think of carbs, we'll talk about the purposes of them first, and then we'll come back to the three types. Okay. One of the first purposes, basically the main thing for carbs is energy. Primary energy source, one of the first energy sources from a dietary standpoint that our body looks to um, it's what fills our muscles up in our, in our liver when we have to move something real quick and have to have a burst of energy. More than that, your body's using that stored carbohydrates in the body for that purpose. All right? So um, the three types, when I talk about it being energy, your simple carbs, I want you to think of things like your sugars, um, fruit. Yeah, keep it there. Your pastries, your danishes, your, you know, those other things, the different types of sugars, of course, as we all know. But when you think of simple carbohydrates, we're thinking of the ones that basically our body digests at a much faster rate and gets energy from it at a much faster rate as well. So many times we have things that are really sugary, we get that spike, we get that sugar high, that rush, because that fuel source is absorbed very quickly, therefore we get energy very fast. The problem with that is most times we come back down from that crash at a fast rate too, and therefore we have a fast low as well. Now we have complex, I want you to think starches. You're talking about your whole grains, your quinoa, your sweet potatoes, um, your lentils, uh, whatever else you like to eat. I'm trying to think of something. My mind's going blank. Um, your rices, um, black rices, one of my favorites. But basically, you start with starches, grains, breads, things along those lines. And um, those are your complex carbs. Now, the difference between the complex and the simple is absorption. The complex carbs give you, are digested at a much slower rate, so therefore they give you more longer lasting energy over time. There's, there's no spikes, highs and lows. It's more so even kill energy throughout the course of the day. And then you talk about fibrous. Fibrous, I want you to think veggies. Veggies are really, really great from the standpoint that they don't add a lot of energy per se, but they add a lot of fiber, which is great for the body, great for the intestines. And fiber is also very, very crucial for your gut health at a whole different level. There's so many different types of fiber, um, fiber in of itself from different food sources and whatnot, and they're really, really they're huge when it comes to how well your body functions and operates. So um, veggies, think vegetables, and think volume. You will always get in more vegetables, you will always get in more volume, you always get in more nutrients because most fibrous carbs are very, very nutrient dense. You're talking about your broccoli, your cauliflower, your asparagus, your what vegetables you like? Kales, spinaches, boom, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, all these different ones. Those are more of the fibrous ones. What was that? French fries. Oh, French fries. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh-huh. Um, now, the major difference between these three, if you look up one term to have a better understanding of where things classify when it comes to your, basic carbs are ranked from the same point, how it affects your blood sugar. And a simple term to look at will be glycemic index. This isn't number two, right? No, it's not number two. This okay. is something else you <laughs> jot down. Something to look at. The reason, is, maybe, actually, it is. I had that on number two. But there's nothing. Carbs are energy. That's the main purpose. That's what it does. It fuels up, energizes the body. That's what it is. So, glycemic index, we want to understand that where certain foods rank and where they form regards to how they affect your blood sugar. 
certain things affect them very, very quickly, so therefore they're very, very high. I think that the inside of 100, like sugar will be like up, up there. That Jones will hit the blood sugar very hard, gonna hit very quickly, so you have a big surge, but you also have a big crash on the back end. All right? Now you'll see something like a sweet potato. That one's gonna be more, much more low on the glycemic index. If therefore, what I mean by that is, if I have 30 grams of sugar, it's just straight sugar again, I have 30 grams of sweet potato, the impact on the body is not the same thing. Even though the calories are identical, the impact on my blood sugar, therefore on my muscle building, on my fat burning, are two different things entirely. The impact on my mood is completely different. So that 30 grams of each equates to 120 calories on both ends. But again, the effect on the body, the signal that is sending is what differs now, okay? Some people say, if I'm tracking my food, I'm eating with my calories. True, but where are the calories coming from? What are the sources? Is it a bunch of sugar? Or are you getting a more complex of fibrous carbohydrates? That will make a difference. So they have a decreased glycemic index? Huh? Say that again? They have a decreased glycemic index, the complex. And yeah, the number on the for those are much, much lower relative to the sugar. So if you look at the scale, if you look it up, there's a whole scale of what foods rank where regardless of the impact of the glycemic index and um, how much of a load the impact it has on your overall system on average, whatever. Even more, everyone's a little different here and there. Um, but more often not, many times people who... I'm not going to get that point just yet. I'm going to leave it alone. All right, cool. So, what was that? All right, cool. Third one. <laughs> Third circle is an F. It's not a grade. It stands for fats. I'm sure with a grade. So now, all right, fats. First things first. Again, energy as well. They are a much more dense energy source than your carb carbohydrates. About two times as much. Actually, a little bit more than two times as much. Dense. If we look at the actual numbers of calories and um, whatnot per gram. So, energy source. Now, the second thing that's very, very crucial, EFAs. EFA stands for essential fatty acids. All right? Now, in the term itself, it's essential. Meaning that it's necessary. Meaning that your body needs this in order to function. Essential fatty acids. Your body needs fat. Fat is not bad. The issue with fat is we have a lot of trash stuff that's been made that's not actual the stuff that we nature would have provided for us. So a lot more saturated fats, a lot more trans fats, a lot of other fats that have been man-made byproducts because of what we're doing now when it comes to food. So therefore, fat as a whole gets a bad rap. But your body literally needs this to function. Your brain needs this. There's a part of your cell wall that's made up of fat that helps regulate the cell's health and its well-being. So without that, your, your body will literally sh shut down and break down. More often than not, when your nail fingernails get really, really brittle, more often, more often many times it's a sign that your fat levels are too low. So there's little, there's little things your body does that let you know, hey, something's off, but many times we don't recognize the signs, therefore we just keep going and keep rocking out. But you need fats. Your nervous system, your nerves, really, it's like, ah, uh, this, this is commercials from um, hair commercials. You ever see a hair commercial where we talk about how, well, your hair can be really, really brittle, and it shows like the hair shaft, and you use our product, obviously the shaft becomes nice and smooth. smooth. Yes. <laughs> The fats in our diet do the same thing like that to our These here, these vitamins are fat soluble, meaning that you need to have them in order for your body to even get these nutrients and absorb them. We're breaking down at a faster rate sometimes now that we did years ago because our food is much more, also more deficient and our lifestyle is much more deficient. We have so many other options other than real food. And a lot of food we eat, I call uh, Michael Pollan, there's a book called um, Food Rules. And he uses this phrase, this is where I got it from. We have food and we have food like stuff. And we have food-like substances. Things that look like food but aren't actually food. We can, we can eat them, yes. But you can also pour orange juice inside your gas tank because it's liquid. But it doesn't mean the cars run better, run better because of that. You feel me? It's, it was, if I say I'm going to put orange juice in my gas tank, you say that's, that's stupid. I say, well, right now, you know what's in there is trash. Just being honest. It tastes really good. Don't get me wrong. But yo, the reality of it is, to my body, it is a poison. Poison. That's the reality of it. And that's a, it's a hard truth. I had, to, I had to be very, very real with myself when I was trying to make my own transition to get better. Because, like, it's stuff is so many foods. You think you're picking my food. A lot of stuff is just corn and soy based. Look at the label. A lot of it is this very version of the same thing. Just dress up in a different way, but in actuality, it's the same thing over and over and over again. And when you show on a set enough documentaries and reading enough books, like, you realize this stuff is crazy. Like, wait a minute. They got us eating what? Wait a minute. So, it's just some dressed up trash. A lot of it is. It tastes really good. Don't get me wrong. But the taste buds and the rest of the body can be on two different pathways all together because just because it tastes good can't be the only reason why you eat what you eat. We're not three years old no more. Like we, have, we have to elevate and mature in, even in our choosing of our foods. You, got, you, you have to eat to live. You with me? There's a phrase that was said, um, he said, we dig our graves with our teeth. Because literally that's how, we, that's how it comes about because we can age, speed up our aging process because of how we eat. 
we also, we also can slow it down at the same time because of how we eat, along with all the other lifestyle stuff that we do. But we literally dig a grace with our teeth. And um, so, on the next page over, we're going to talk about how we want to map out our macros. A general guideline to start, and then from there, we'll have some other pointers. And then from there, I'll show you a few other things, and then from there, open up some questions, and then we rock out from there. All right? So, a journal way. Now, I say this, and I say I put emphasis on it because it's just a, there's no one way of saying for, for a fact, okay, Cece, you need this. Mike, you need that. Asia, you need this. Stephanie, you need this. There's no perfect way of saying this is exactly what you need. Your body's going to be perfect like that. No. We have to dial things in over time, but you have to start somewhere. Pick a starting place. You can, you can, we can become um, what's up, paralysis by analysis and try to get everything perfect to start. You don't got to be perfect to start. You just have to stay in the game long enough in order to perfect your start, if that makes sense. All right? So, general guideline to set off. Take your weight, and you will use that as your set point when you want to start out. So, whatever your weight is, you're right there at the top. Now, a simple guideline to set off with one gram per pound of body weight. That could be for your protein, but that would also be for your carbohydrate intake. That's how many grams I'm supposed to take a day? To start. Now, we want to say to start. Just for, we're going to hold the question right now, and we're, and we're going to circle back around, all right? Oh, all right? Dude. Now, we're talking specifically. It may be a lot of food, but it's not a lot of calories. See, now, that's what we're talking about. Clean eating versus trash eating are two different things. But if you're eating clean, the volume of food can actually go up significantly. You get to the point where you feel like you're stuffing yourself. It's crazy. You don't have to feel stuffed up, but you can't get to the point where you're eating so much volume of food, but because the calories, that volume of food, clean eating can be the equivalent like you having half a pizza. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? That pizza could be my 3,000 calories. If I eat 3,000 clean food, it's like the amount of food is like, oh my God, I can eat all this. But the calories of your body is the same. But the impact of the half a pizza versus the clean eating is not the same thing. You'll build two different physiques off of that. Okay, so um, you'll see we don't have, don't have anything on here, here for fat as of yet because we have fats already found in our proteins, also in our carbohydrates well, that we select by default. After you see we work through all the numbers, we'll see how much fat we're taking in, and then if we can add in more based upon the sources that we picked, then you can add us more fat there. But I don't want to do that prematurely. I have to see what, how, where are things regards to our protein and our carbs first, and then we can build from there. So now. In here, you see I have feedings one through six. I always have to call my meals feedings because that's basically what you're doing. You're feeding the machine. You're feeding your body. Why is that funny to you? Because that is like a farm animals, but it's... Feeding. You're feeding the machine. You're fueling up for a purpose. You're eating on purpose. Not just yeah, it's eating to eat. You're eating because you have an objective of how you're trying to take your body to. So, ideal scenario. You want to get in four to six small feedings a day. I say four to six. Find what your flow. It could be three meals, three snacks, three real meals, one snack. Get in four to six. Most people are in a good spot there. Now, um, that's to, to get your body into a good flow. Now, are there other versions and other variations of doing stuff? Yes. Well, I'm telling you, one thing I suggest and recommend is go for four to six meals to start to get your body into a rhythm, to train your body, to train your metabolism, to get things flowing, moving in the right direction. To get, if you are clogged up, to get things clogged and things really moving in the right direction, metabolically speaking, digestion-wise, and whatnot. So with that, say I'm choosing four meals, or say I'm choosing six meals, whichever one you choose, whatever this number is, you divide your weight number, say a 200 pound person, say the weight was 200 pounds, all right? If I'm doing that, I'm doing four meals, I'm one, two, three, four. My protein for each meal equals, is that 50 grams for each one? Makes sense. I'm finding a snack of fifty grams of protein. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, you have to find a snack pack in that. You may have to do a shake. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, <laughs> so um, but that's how, and the same thing. If you're doing four meals, and my my carbs are the same. I'm looking at fifty when it comes to carbs as well throughout. The next step from there is okay. If I have, if I know how many grams I need, so now what are my food choices going to be? I may do, I don't know. What do you do for protein? Chicken. Okay, I'm doing chicken. See, I'm doing chicken breast. On average, four ounces packs about 22 grams, if I remember correctly. So I'm looking at at least eight, eight, eight ounces can be 44. That put me in the ballpark right there. You with me? So now, see, I'm going eight ounces of, for this meal, I have eight ounces of chicken breast. 
And then I choose to also have some me and that seems to me I have some black rice myself. That's why I wouldn't want to go have chicken and rice. But now in that rice, I get a few, few more grams of protein as well. Plus I'm getting my carbs in too. So that may take me up to about 50 grams of protein. And I may go look for get about 50 grams of rice too. But now the main thing is finding one of my portions to be. So basically what we're doing here is work, we're working backwards, working from the numbers of what I want my numbers to be, and then I pick my foods. More, more, most often people say, okay, I'm going to eat these foods, I'm going to document what I'm, what I'm getting in, I'm going to see where my, my, where my numbers fall, and then from there I can make adjustments. Either or is totally fine. I'm a better fan of, I want to know for a fact I'm getting my numbers straight, but there's trial and error. The time period, that's where the journaling comes in that we've done before. We, we journal our food throughout the progression, you drive, especially over your first six weeks, you're writing down what you're eating, so on and so forth. If you took that same journal, put it into like a My Fitness Pal, something along those lines, or lose it, and you enter all those same foods, your portion, all that jazz, it's going to spit out to you these numbers. These numbers are there. We just aren't kind of aware of them sometimes because we don't want to be to a degree. But on there in the app, there's a place that has a little pie chart to tell you your numbers, your macros, how many grams of protein, carbs, fats. It'll break down everything for you. Your ratios, all these other things that can seem like a Sometimes it's all in there. The main thing is, your numbers, you may be hitting your calorie goal of 2,000, but where the 2,000 is coming from may be a bunch of fat and a bunch of sugar. Not enough protein, not enough fiber, all these, and so your numbers can be off. Because a diet, a diet of 2,000 calories of processed food and 2,000 calories of much cleaner food is not the same physique that you build because the impact on the body is different because of where the food is coming from. If I'm really focused on trying to drop some more fat and really not, notch up my metabolism, I want to have a slightly higher protein value from the same point that protein has a higher thermic effect. What I mean by thermic effect is there is TEF, which is thermic effect of food. By thermic effect, just by eating the food, my metabolism ramps up just because I ate it. Not because I did anything else. There's no activity. The only activity is that this, the digestion process. And protein has the highest stomach effect out of all three macronutrients. All right? So say I have my Franz chicken breast. My Franz chicken breast packs 100 calories, on, roughly speaking. So of that, 30% of that chicken breast, the energy that I get from it, which is of that 20-something grams of protein, goes to just the digestion process. So I'm only really netting about 70 calories because 30 calories I, I used up just in digesting the food. Yet, but other than eat it, all right. So our proteins have with the highest stomach effect. Hence the reason why each one of our meals, if you look through the main meals, have a good protein portion along with it. You with me? Whether you have whether it's eggs in the morning, whether you're having um, ground turkey meatballs for lunch, or you're having salmon in the evening. Regardless of the protein that, that you choose, they all have that thermic effect, that metabolic kick up, that metabolic boosting, just because you ate that particular food. Now, fat thermic effects like zero. Even the good fats, this is what it is. It's they, they, turn over, they turn over the store real quick. It isn't, there's not a major di processing aspect to it. Now, same thing with the talking about the really, really processed sugars. Oh, everybody gets that job. You get the sugar high. Because once it hits the system, your body can drop right away. The protein has to break it down, digest it. Same thing with the fibrous carbs and the compass carbs. It takes more energy to break them down and to get the nutrients from them. But that process of breaking it down actually burns energy by default and notches your metabolism up at the same time. That's how we begin to strategize the food. So the internal world, I'm getting my lean proteins, my vegetables, my, my um, complex carbs, and so forth. My internal world is getting notched up, getting the nutrients it needs, and my metabolism is getting healthier and healthier. As a byproduct of that, my external physical shape starts to show what's happening internally. Along with the training, we're working out, we're putting in the workouts, doing cardio, we're being mindful, we're staying active. All those things help to expedite the process because the workouts we do here as well, not just the metabolism. A good, a good workout here can boost your metabolism for 24 to 48 hours after you stop training. So you see most of your training, three days a week at least, each one builds and builds. And then you get cardio in three days a week too. Those all help to stoke. Good cardio session like we did that time on elliptical, that can boost your metabolism for six to eight hours after you stop. You go home after you leave here, you're hitting the books, you're sitting at your desk studying, and internally you're burning like crazy. You go to bed, you're still burning like crazy because of what you did throughout the course of the day and because of what you ate before you went to sleep. All these things are now talking fat burning. You see how we want to make sure everything's talking the same language. Because when everything's talking the same language, we move so much faster to our destination because nothing's pulling us in the opposite direction. You with me? All right? Boom. So, if you're doing six meals, you just divide that same number by six, and you will know, break down the portions. I never do more meals up today because I don't 
like if you're eating too, too heavy. It all depends on your body. 50 grams for me, I do that, my, most of my meals are around 48 grams on average. So, but that's me also, I have, I have a higher weight, so it's, I need a little bit more. But um, each person is different. So what I meant in regards to, you asked, I mean, when we first did the numbers, you actually have to have per day. Yes, but no, because each person's body also requires a little bit more and also a little bit less. Hence the reason also, we track the numbers on a weekly basis. How is your body responding to this particular intake? You've been doing these particular foods, with these particular serving sizes. Like when we first start off, we use the palm of your hand, simple portion control, nothing too fancy. But now if we keep those portions consistent, how's your body responding from week to week? How's the body fat changing and shifting? Because as we look through those particulars, we're trying to get a better sense. Okay, are we in a good place? Do we need to take the protein up some more? Or can we stay where we are? Or do we need to drop the fat down some? But once we have a baseline of sorts, then you can start to extrapolate and build up and build down. But you have to have a baseline to start. You have to have some type of baseline numbers of something saying, hey, this is where I am right now. So say you want to go this route and say, I'm about to map all my numbers, my macros, and so forth. Before doing that, I would say, hey, log your food for three days. Whatever you're eating right now, whatever you're, you're doing on a consistent basis right now for three days, log your food, and, but also log it in what I call uh, in like a my fitness path. You want to see where are my numbers at right now? Because you may be in a scenario where Cece was before. She only get 800 calories. And you may go through here and say, hey, based upon my weight, where I am right now, I should be taking 2,000 calories. What you don't want to do is go into jumping up a 1,200 calorie surplus without realizing it. So know where are you at right now and where do I want to build towards. Now I can grow into that 2,000 calories rather than jump into it haphazardly. You with me? But now this requires a high level of mindfulness at the same time because you can just wing it. But why? When you know more, you can, you can, when you know better, you can do better. But it takes a little bit more planning and detail oriented in the beginning. And it can be frustrating. I remember my first month of journaling my food. I hated it. It was freaking annoying. I was like an old person. Like, you know, back in my day, we didn't have these apps. Cause we, didn't have, we didn't have apps. It was only like three years ago. But no, nah, not three years. It was longer than that. But I literally had a notepad. Every night, I write down what I ate. And I write down my, my protein, my carbs, my fats. actually do my numbers, how many total calories of this. This is annoying. But in doing that, I started to realize I was taking a whole lot of sugar. These oatmeal packets that taste real good, my apple, cinnamon, oh, I should let them, and then those are getting the maple and brown sugar. Yo. But anyway, you realize how much sugar these things are packing in them. It's like, crap, I only have X amount of calories to eat per day. If I burn them here, I have nothing else left over here. And you start realizing it's like a check and balance. It's like, it's like your bank account, literally. If you have a balance of $2,000 in there every single day, you, can, you have to use that $2,000. But if I use it haphazardly, I'm still lacking. I still, I'm still hungry if I eat more trash because then it's not as satisfying. So you have to become more mindful of what choices you pick. Therefore, that's when you eat more. So therefore, most, more often than not, 90% of my time, my diet's much cleaner because I can get more volume of food and I feel more satisfied. And I, I enjoy eating, eating is fun. But now you eat, I don't think I'll be perfect. By far, you guys my wife, I'm not perfect all the time, not at all. But um, I'm more mindful than I'm not mindful, if that makes sense, all right? For example, even today, um, what's Joffrey's cousin has a birthday. So I know there's gonna be there's gonna be this fan, there's gonna be plenty of rice and beans. He already told me that. He's like, my mom's making some banging rice and beans to be prepared. <laughs> cool. But my carbs right now are cut for the most part of the day because I know carbs are coming. So I'm mindful of how my day's even looking as well. So I'm doing lean protein vegetables all day on purpose to prepare my body for what, what I know is to come. But that's how you also can use but understanding what are these foods used for, how do they affect my body to help offset the Thanksgiving that's coming or the birthday that's coming, or the weekend that's coming, you know I'm about to go with my girls, we're about to go rock out. It's about to be crazy. Let me prepare my body for what's to come because I'm gonna be really chilling, I'm gonna lay back a little bit. But you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a smorgasbord of craziness at the point where you set yourself back two weeks because of that weekend. You can pre-prep your body so that, therefore, the impact is less harmful. There's gonna be some impact, as you talked before. <laughs> Boom, I need about three or four days to, to get back to my normal. Cool. But you know that going into it. So, the main thing in that next chart down here, we want to do we saw what it was like to do the haphazard way our goal from day to day especially if you're trying to maximize your fat burning is you, you want to control your blood sugar and control your insulin so if this is that TDE this is where your blood sugar may be for that matter we're trying to stay instead of having high spikes in sugar and then go down low we're trying to stay more so in here if that makes sense. And here's more of the processed stuff, more of the trash foods. You're gonna have the high spikes, the ups and downs. You have the insulin levels getting more messed up. You're gonna have your hormones more out of whack. In here, when we have more of the complex carbohydrates, more of the fibrous carbohydrates, more of the proteins along with that, the quality ones for that matter, our blood sugar stays much more level. So therefore, there are less peaks and valleys 
and much more consistency for the body. More consistency more means less of a threat. It means your body responds easier because less stress put on your system. All right? Now on the last page, we can see we have some um, nutrition facts on different foods. But at the top, we have some fat burning foods. Number one, a simple way people always say, okay, I get all that. What's the easy way? What's the, something easy to remember it in regards to how do I go out picking the foods that are best for my goal? Especially when we're talking about fat burning, fat loss, muscle building. Three letter word. Number one says, basically you want to eat foods that, you know how to fill it? Anybody have a guess? It's like, what's the that? So, what? Fuel the body. It's a three, three letter word. Three letter word. Oh, three letter word. Three letter word. Oh, it's like a Wheel of Fortune, that's what it is, yeah. Who wants to wager $100 on the first <laughs> On the first <laughs> question, eat foods that are... Right. For number one, it says foods that, you want to eat foods that, it's three letter, three letter where you want to fill in. Oh. Rocked. Boom! You got it, see? <laughs> that's basically a simple guide of what, we're trying to make sense of what foods are, the ideal foods really maximize the thermic effect um, boosting what's happening. All the things we already talked about, we just had to minimize it down to something really simple. Let the bulk of your diet be foods that rot. Foods that rot have life within them, number one. Foods that rot can't sit on the shelves very long. Foods that rot pack nutrients, pack that thermic effect. I never guessed that. <laughs> I was going to ask to buy a valve. <laughs> buy a valve, no doubt. <laughs> so, um, all right, not saying it has to be 100% of it. Don't get me wrong. We don't have, we, Enjoy life, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, be mindful of what you're fueling your body up on because what you eat, you will become. If you want to be lean, strong, so on and so forth, you can't eat a whole bunch of trash unless you're the genetically gifted one. I know if, I know maybe one to two people in my entire life who can really get away with eating anything. Now, there's nobody, none of those people here in this room, myself nope. included. So, <laughs> because, remember, we talked about that deck of cards. My deck isn't stacked that way, so I have to be more mindful of what I put in and, and why. So with that, the next one, on number two, it says... You want to consume foods with, these are numbers, blank to blank ingredients on the label. Any guess? It's a range. Three to, three to five? Close. The second number is five. One to five? Boom, there we go. That wasn't really all that complicated. <laughs> um, one to five ingredients. Um, this, I actually learned this from haagen dazs haagen -Dazs ice cream, strawberry is my favorite. Um, and I, you know, who here likes ice cream? Lots of <laughs> what, what, what kind of ice cream do you like? Soft serve, really. So, okay. Butter pecan. Okay. Yes. Oh, Reese's. Butter pecan. Reese's. Strawberry. Strawberry. I see. <laughs> you know, strawberry's my favorite. That's my number one. And um. Birthday cake. The one thing I like <laughs> about a lot about Hagen Dazs, I didn't know this is long before I was into food and nutrition. What have you? Is that how minimized their their ingredients are. Like the Hagen strawberry, I, it, I, even on it, they say five, I think they say five ingredients. Like they say, say something about that. And I, I, I never noticed that prior to that. Like they really only have like four or five ingredients on their label when it comes to that, the strawberry. I only the strawberry or Hagen is the only thing I spend my money on. Unless I'm buying something for the missus or the boys. I, 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 for myself, Hagen Dazs strawberry, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> but what I began to learn as I began to prep and really started to get into it was that um, a lot of the foods have different, the, the macros can be the same, right, as you talked before. But the ingredients, as you're showing on the list, Based upon the different options, that list can vary significantly. The cleaner the food, the less things on the ingredient list. So we turn the food around. Forget about the front of the packaging. All that doesn't mean anything. That's just, that's smoke and mirrors. That's marketing. It looks real good. Oh my goodness, get this, get that. All that means nothing. Turn that package around. See what the numbers break down in regards to the grams of protein, carbs, fats, those macros, and also the listing of ingredients. The first five things on the nutrition label are the, the dominant things that were within, within that food. All right? They have to do things in, when it comes from the standard of um, food, what's what I'm looking for? Industry. You have to list things in order of supremacy. All right? So the first thing on that list is sugar. Regardless of what else you see, oh, there also has some enzymes that don't mean nothing. Like the, the bulk of you, you just sugar water, let's call it what it is. But um, the bulk of what it is is told up front. Okay? So always be very, very mindful of the first five ingredients. But at the same time, if you can find foods that you really rock with and really enjoy and really vibe with, even the snacks, like even all my chips or popcorns, whatever, all meet within one to five. Now I've actually got even more strict. I do my one to three. Because I have some really good options now. The kettle, kettle chips by, yeah, kettle, I love kettle. They brand is bang. But anyway, they have these, <laughs> these chips that 
It's literally it's like three ingredients. But it, it has the same thing as, as my Dorito or the other version of something else but without all the extra junk. Every additional thing on this list is one more additional thing my body has to process out. Think about that. That's on top of the calories it has to work through. These are all additional additive, additional things my body now has to process out of my system. That's additional stress on my system. Hence the reason why when you clean diet and go to a more cleaner diet, it's, it's invariably most of the time it's easier to drop the weight because you're putting less stress on your system overall. Because yes, your calories can be the same trash diet versus clean diet, but the stress because of all the additional things that come along with it is much lessened the cleaner your diet is as well. Remember, we're trying, to understand, we're trying to understand the why behind. Why do certain things work better in this, this versus that? Even though it may not be as fun, but it is fun when you get the results. The results be fun. I'm sure we all, when you got the results, you step on a scale, you check, put on the clothes. Oh, snap. I'm going to keep things a little more chill because it's really not that bad. It's not that hard. But um, as you can see on this first one here, the reason why I have this Ritz crackers first, because it was a package of Ritz crackers that helped me understand nutrition for the first time. It was in 08. I'm trying to, I'm getting ready, learning to compete, learning about nutrition at that time. And I didn't understand how nutrition labels work. I thought in a package, how they package it was the serving size. That's what I thought. So you buy a box of Ritz crackers, they come in these sleeves. You have these four <laughs> sleeves in the Ritz crackers, right? So my mind is, okay, one sleeve is one serving because that's how it's packaged. That's what I'm done. So a lot of you are not. I'll turn around, see the calories. Oh, that one, that one sleeve is 80 calories. calories. That's what I'm thinking in my head. I'm like, this is no, no nonsense. I'm telling you the honest truth. I was in the kitchen at my parents' house. I'm like, okay, cool. And then over time, as we learned more about nutrition, sometime within that first month, I started recognizing, like, wait a minute. No, here at the top, it says serving size. Five crackers. <laughs> serving per, per container, about 24. So I would eat a whole sleeve at the snack before my meal. Thinking, I'm just getting a quick snack in because the more processed the food, the less the, it's not, it won't hold you the same way. It's not going to sit as heavy as a cleaner meal. So, what's 24 times 80? Anybody? Nineteen. So what was that number? One ninety-two. Nineteen twenty. Yeah. Okay. So in that whole sleeve, there's nineteen hundred calories just in that sleeve of crackers. I'm not sure about you if you're festive to it. Have you ever eaten a bunch of crackers by your, on your own? Yes. Boom. I can eat a whole sleeve of crackers. Exactly. But now think I about that. I almost did the other day. Think about this. So on an average calorie diet, you should be roughly 2,000 calories. I just did that in a sleeve of crackers. <laughs> now think about the junk. That was a snack I just had. I didn't do my whole daily intake in one sitting, but it didn't sit that way. You see what I'm saying? Now that same meal of, hmm, so now we're talking chicken breast. It's 100 calories per four ounces. Say I have that five times, say I had that five times, so that's 500 calories just in chicken breast, and that's, uh, that's four ounces a piece, four, 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 five times, that's 200, that's 20 ounces of chicken breast that I had. That 20 ounces of chicken breast must sit much heavier in your system than that character, but I only got 500 calories out of that. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Then I added my compass car, added some sweet potatoes, another 500, whatever. I can eat so much more food and yet still be under that 1920, but I have so many more nutrients. I have some more thermic effect. I have all the other added benefits. I didn't, this, this, that's why Ritz, I, I stick with my head. I'm like, yo, what? what? Ritz crackers that messed you up? I'm not saying don't eat them. I'm saying be mindful. Like, when you saw the service, it's yeah, something adds up. You just can't have a couple of Ritz. And and I'm saying don't have it at all. You can't control yourself. Don't have it at all. It's like, be like kryptonite sometimes. But that's how the numbers break down. But many times, we don't understand how the numbers work, what this even means. For many people, this is a foreign language. Like, okay, what does that mean? I'm just going to have some. I'm gonna have some more now. Next thing you know, the whole bag is gone. I ate the whole bag of chips. <laughs> but there were 30 servings in that bag of chips. You just ate the whole thing, but now you're not, I can't drop any weight. I just had one snack. But that one snack gave you 4,000 calories. You didn't eat two days worth of food in one sitting, and you still ate the rest of your food too. Don't mind, you, eat all, you ate all your dieting food as well. <laughs> the dieting food was good. I ate my chicken, I had my salad for lunch, I did all that. But then I had that binge later in the day, or first thing in the morning. Next thing you know, I done blown two days worth of work. All my work is on cardio, I done ate that in one meal. You cannot outtrain a bad diet. It's nearly impossible. Trust me, I've tried, y'all. It's so freaking hard. Unless you living, eat, sleep, train, that's all you do all day long. I see some of the athletes can get away with it because they train all day. Doing two of it, okay. But still, the fuel source you put in will determine what's going to happen on the back end. But yeah, this stuff, the more processed the food, the faster this adds up. So now, we go over to the next one. We got the quinoa. How many ingredients are in the quinoa? What is, what is quinoa? I don't know what that is. Well, think of it like rice. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a grain, basically. You, know, you make it the same way you make rice. That same thing, I could, I could have had brown rice right there. And just about the macros on that are almost identical. So say that, say brown rice. The ingredient on that one is going to be brown rice. Does it? There's, there's no other additional listing on there. But on that same particular food, the calories can be almost identical. 
But the impact is so much different because of what's in it as well and also what's not in it. You with me? So therefore, the thermic effect, say I have the equivalent intake from my, so if I'm looking at the rich crackers, every five crackers is 10 grams. So say I end up having 15 crackers, which is no big deal. 15 crackers, that's three servings right there. That puts me at 30 grams of carbs. You see how that works? On this, the total carbohydrates per five crackers is 10 grams. If I do that three, three times in total, that's 50. Oh, I want more, I want more, I want to get to 30. How many do I got to do for 30? Yeah, three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three servings. So 15 crackers gives me 30 grams. Now, one serving of my quinoa gives you 35 grams. On my 30 grams of crackers, that impact, remember that spike we're talking about? Much more of a spike there. The quinoa puts me in here. Again, numbers versus impact. They differ. So now we go over one more. One of my favorites. It used to be, I should say. This year was our Cool Ranch Doritos. Oh, man. Oh, those are oh, come, come on, on now. On. <laughs> I'm just saying. Them things are, yeah. Yeah, they're good. They taste really good. Yeah, they do. But now, but they don't do really good to the body. <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> okay. Once it passes the taste buds, there really isn't a benefit to them being in the system, to the body. It reminds them, okay, this is trash. What they do is trash, and just pack this away. Most of them, when they pass away food, they can't process it. It stores away in fat. It's, your, your fat stores a lot of toxins as well. And that's another point when we talk about weight loss specifically, something we haven't touched on yet. But um, I will not spend too much time on it. When you're going through your weight loss journey and you're trying to drop fat off the body in different areas, there are certain plateaus that aren't plateaus because you're not doing enough work or activity. They're plateaus that your body needs to get to a certain level of health before it feels comfortable to release the fat that you're trying to get to burn off. Reason being that stored within some of these fat cells are toxins that have been there for years. And these things, when they get released out, you can sometimes you can feel almost kind of sick as you're going through your weight loss journey. Not because you had a cold, but you kind of feel almost fluish. You feel a little off. This has happened to me as me going through me leaning out. And I'm like, I couldn't, I figured out what it was. So in those moments, I'll make sure to boost my nutrients even higher. I'll start getting in more of my micronutrients. And more often than that, it will subside. But um, I, I made the connection when, um, well, my wife, she, you know, she also does massage therapy. Many times, something that's very customary. After the massage, you know, they give you some water. Hey, make sure to drink this because as they're going through breaking things up, they're releasing toxins in the body as well that may have been trapped within the muscles and so on and so forth. So you want to hydrate even more to help your body flush out. But as you're going through your weight loss too, I found in my experience that many times you'll find certain pockets of fat that in essence could have been in your body since you were like four or five years old and have been there, have stored certain toxins within them. But until your body gets to a certain point where it feels comfortable enough with your habits and the nutrients you're giving it to release it, to know that if I release this toxin right now, I don't want my system to feel shut down and just too overloaded with bad than the good. So sometimes sometimes staying in the process long enough, you may have to change nothing over the next two, three weeks, but eventually your body kind of turns over. I didn't do anything different, but you did. You stayed in it long enough to allow and ready the internal world for what was to come. So when it's all said and done, stay the course when it's all said and done. Every plateau is just a glass ceiling. No plateau is indefinite. If you apply enough pressure, it will, pressure, it will break. But everyone's break, breaking point is a little different. So my thing is, if, if you apply no pressure, you're not going to get anything. All right? So that's burritos. Another long list. Again, serving size, 18 grams for 28 grams on the scale. Now you can see the list is much longer. Then you go over to chicken breast. In the chicken breast, we have what? Chicken breast. Most times, if it's already frozen or whatnot, they do it has a little bit of sodium added to it as well for preservation. But most times, you can cook that out too, so it's no big deal. But um, the cleaner the diet, if I had a, a meal of chicken breast or quinoa, seasoned up however I wanted to with some herbs, spices, X, Y, and Z, in that entire meal, I can have one bag of Doritos. I'll have more additives to that particular food than my meal of chicken breast and quinoa. So therefore, the stress in my body is much less with the cleaner meal, but also the fat burning is much higher, the thermic effect is much higher. All these things are much higher, even though my calories can be identical between the two meals. Now, the Doritos, you call that a snack. But now, for that particular snack, I could have had, say I had two bags of Doritos. Ever do this? Two, these are small bags. You ever had two bags of Doritos? That's 300 calories right there. Boom. Say I have my, my fried chicken breast and I have my quarter cup of quinoa dry, it gives you about a cup cooked. Say I have, say eat that whole cup. That's 190 and 100. That's 290. 290 calories with the chicken breast and the quinoa versus two bags of Doritos. Much different. Much different impact on the body, would you agree? But now the thermic effect is much different. Fat burning is much different. Muscle building is much different. Overall, impact on the body is just much different. But the calories can be the same, equal, or higher, but the impact is different. The impact is important. It's not just about what am I eating, but what's the impact is it having on my body as well. All right? But um, now you tell me. Any questions you have for me? Because we can talk about stuff forever today, but we ain't trying to go too crazy deep. But um, 
Please, fire away. Anything you got, I'm an open book. And I'll answer the best of my ability. Go ahead. I have one question. I'm iron, I have low iron, and um, I, I think it affects your absorption of something. Mm -hmm. Protein, I think, or something. I'm not sure, but how does that... What can you eat to get iron in? Because the pills make me sick. Iron supplements. Now, you don't do, you don't do a lot of meat, do you? So, are you, are you anemic? No, I'm not anemic. I'm not that low, but I'm okay. close. Got you. Off top of the head. I'm on the point. But uh, the, uh, listen, if you can really go online right now and type in um, top top five food for iron, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll pop up. Boom, it may be kidney beans and this and that. You go, okay, Beats, cool. Beets, liver. Yeah. Okay. yeah I suffer liver. from that, but I oh, get, okay. I get uh, what do they call it? <laughs> it's like, um, I get transfusions. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they tell me to always eat beets. Liver, Ooh. and I can't stand them. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I've learned to appreciate beets, but yeah, yeah they're not fun to eat. But you gotta um, get them pickled. Beets, I, I love yeah, you gotta get them pickled. Oh, I can't do that. That's what I can't really? do. <laughs> got that, yeah, I tried that once. I was like, oh my god, the, the texture. Oh my goodness, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I think it's still in the cabinet now. Nah, yeah, nah, should have stolen out. You gotta get fresh beets. <laughs> yeah, I can do fresh. If I grate them down, that should taste sweeter oh, that way. Okay, so you grate okay. it down, you do carrots. Yeah. That joint has to bring up the sweetness, and then oh, I can okay. do that. Cool. But other than that. You got that seeds. But um but yeah, so in that regard, even as you put together certain foods, you go, okay, I know these are the, these are my top ten foods when it comes to the iron I need to get in. Okay, let me make sure I'm working through my diet on a regular basis. And also now, how much do I need to be getting in? If I want to say you want say you don't want to give you something something to you, I need you to get an X amount of um, iron per day. Okay, what's the equipment that when it comes to my food? If I can find other ways to add these things in, how much of the beets, how much of this food per serving, how many grams, how many ounces, what does it need to be to put it over to X amount over a 24-hour period? That's the homework on your end that you want to begin to start to investigate. This. Okay, boom, there's some research that needs to be done. Okay, and I know, I'm not guessing anymore. Well, these foods are good, but now you can <coughs> a portion that's not giving you much of anything. So, okay, I'm eating such and such. I should be seeing the chain. But you need to be eating about seven times as much per day. So it's like, okay, you're starting in the right direction, but you're not, you haven't you have even scratched the surface just yet. So now, okay, boom, what serving size is ideal for your body to get what it needs on a consistent basis? And then from there, you have to be consistent on a daily basis to see what effects and impacts it has on the system. On average, when you're talking about food, when I talk about food is medicine, but it is impact. Like you take, I'm in pain, I'm going to take some um, ibuprofen, I feel the pain go away right away. Our food, our body regenerates, as we talked about before. But with that, on average, it takes about 90 days or so for your body to really get to a good flow when it comes to your food, for things to adjust and to shift. Some people sooner, some people later. But if you don't look for it to be an overnight thing is what I'm saying. You have to give your body that time. If your fat has been really low, if your iron has been really, really low, give yourself a good month to two months to really see how is my diet impacting my body if your body needs time to regenerate. And as it regenerates, it's, it's making your body anew with the food that you're putting in it. So it, it takes time for it to be, begin to show. So it's not gonna happen. Oh, I, this past week I've been on top of my game. Oh man, I'm saying I don't see no change. I forget this is pointless. It doesn't work like that. This isn't a pill. This isn't medicine in the standpoint as we have pharmaceutical medicine for that matter. But our food is medicinal because a lot of the medicine we have comes from food sources, comes from plant sources. This in a much much higher doses. So when we're changing over our food, we have to be mindful. We have to give our body time to adjust. We didn't get into the mess that we're in overnight. So we're not gonna get out of it overnight as well. We've dug yourself into a hole over the past 15, 20 years. But now I'm on top of my game for two months. I feel as though I'm entitled to something now. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You gotta put in more work than that. All right, I was like, be here a year from now. Imagine you in a year put in work, in two years. And that seems like a long time. But do any of you guys plan on dying anytime soon? You, I, I will pray we all have a lot more life to live, right? So we have another 15, 20 some odd years. What's it to dedicate six months to a year to really, really get things in place? To not worry about it for the next 30 or 40 years. So I'm saying you want to have the far long-term vision, but also have the short-term sight. Say, okay, if I can focus for this time duration and say no, not yet, but long enough, I can be really put myself in a position not to worry about the same things when I'm 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. Because I see it, I've been trained for a long time. From on average, females on average, I see people from 20 to uh, oldest has been 85. The same yo-yo scenario has come up at every single gender, de demographic. We all where we're where they're from, we're also, but age like yo. If you didn't learn it then, they are coming in the 50s trying to learn it then. And then it's, oh, well, they come back in the 60s. I'm like, it's the same thing. It doesn't change in time, but if the sooner you get it, the sooner you master it to some degree, the much easier life becomes. And many times, hey, well, I should have did this before. True, but you're doing it now. Don't beat yourself up over it. But you want to get a better feel also over your body. Ladies, specifically, your body goes through so many more phases than we do as guys. This question is, 
It's the cards of the devil. Hey, what am I saying? I can't. I got nothing to do with it. But um, boy, that being said, the better control you have over your mind, understand your flow as you go through the different seasons of motherhood, of menopause, of perimenopause, all these things that come with y'all is what it is. The better flow you are with your body, also with your nutrition, it makes a big difference as well. And it also kind of allows the transition to be smoother to a degree as well. And here, many times people going through, uh, what are they, the hot flashes. Most times when, get, <laughs> when people get their diet better and start training, they find a sleep to be better. I remember um, one of our members, um, her name was Linda, she would get hot flashes every single 45 minutes. <laughs> I lied, she could clock it to a clock. You could tell in the middle of a session she'll get it. She just have to stop and let it pass and then she'll go on. But literally after training, her hot flashes became, much, the impact of it became minimized. Her sleep got better because the impact at night became less. All because she tried to shift her food to be more health balanced. And it started to impact everything. It didn't stop them. Don't get me wrong. That's the season of life. It is what it is. Everyone's season is different. However, the impact was different because the impact of what she put it in was different too. So therefore, she created a better internal world. So therefore, it responded to it differently too. So you have to say so in it. You can't change everything, but you can change a lot. Do you just want to own it though? Good question, Cease. Any other questions for me? Go ahead. How do you figure out how many calories you should be intaking a week or a day? All right, cool. So as we talked about, we had... The grams for ten. Now, your calories. I'm glad you said that. We haven't talked calories much at all, other than talking about a two thousand calories scenario. Your calories are a byproduct of your macronutrients. What I mean by that is, you don't. If you look on on, on that sheet, right? We'll take it. We we'll just use the quinoa for example. Actually, which ones would be easier? We'll do the. We're going to do the Doritos. All right, we're going to do the Doritos. Third one in. So my, how many, we got total calories. It says calories equals 150, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So it tells us that our fat equals 8 grams. Our carbs equal 18 grams, right? Mm -hmm. And our protein equals 2 grams. So on here, we're, we're, there, if we're talking grams, mm -hmm. up here at the very top, we're talking calories. How does it convert over? Now, I'm not sure if it says on here. It actually does. On a Doritos one, the very, very bottom of the Doritos, the very, very last line, you see what it says? Yeah, so it says calories per gram. Fat, nine. Carbs, four. Protein, four. What that means is, in order to convert these numbers over to calories, protein, you have to multiply that by four to tell you how many calories in that meal come from protein. So that's four times two, which gives us eight calories. Our carbs times four, that equals, what's that, 52? 72. 72? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. 72 calories from carbohydrates. And this one here, eight times nine, which equals 72 as well. Calories, that's from fat. So now, we add this up here. We have 72 and 72, which is 144. 144 plus 8 plus 152 calories. So that 152 for the macros, that's where we get our 150 from. But I want to always be mindful of, I like doing things off my macros because more often than not, the calories they get put on this can be pretty general, but the macros I find to be even more specific. But the reason why I said that for, for example, how many calories you want to eat per day is, you could be getting in under 52 calories, but the combination where they come from can vary. That's what I'm talking about. You 2,000 calories of sugar, 2,000 calories of protein, quinoa, so on and so forth. It's not the same physique. So make sure your macros are in the proper place. It's even more important than making sure your total calorie case. Your calories are a final byproduct. But on average, say you were taking your weight, the general way I would go about doing it for simplicity is, see, I was getting ready for a prep. I said, hey, I'm trying to drop some weight. I'll take my weight, so I'll take your weight and multiply it by a factor of 10, 11, or 12. This is one of the simplest ways. I mean, I can, get, I can show you fancy equations. We can get into your BMR, your body fat, all that good and well. Been it years back. I don't do all that anymore. It's not, it's, it's not that deep. So, you wish your weight at right now? 203. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we said it. 203. Yeah, so, yeah, 203. <laughs> Say, if I'm really trying to be really, really aggressive about what I'm doing, I'll take my 203, multiply it by 10. That equals, what's that? 2,000. Boom. That's how many calories I'm going for per day. And if from there, I have my 2,000, 
how many meals am I going for per day? I'm going for four meals a day. If I divide it by four, each meal is going to be about 500 calories. But now the important thing is where the 500 calories coming from. Remember we talked about if I have my chicken, my quinoa, my soup, to make it my 500, great. If it's, I'm going to Popeye's get, get his chicken and biscuit, not the same thing. It tastes good, maybe a little better than the chicken and quinoa, true. However, the impact's not going to be where it's going to be. The fat's going to be really, really high, so on and so forth. So, honestly, there, I'll set up right there, right, roughly 2,000 calories. And, but before I went that route, I always say, okay, how many calories are you eating right now? Now, if you go back, if I was Probably like 6,000. Precisely. <laughs> so, if I'm putting in 6,000, and I'm not burning anywhere near 6,000 per se, I'm, I, my goal is to drop the weight. The equation got to get balanced out somewhere. I have to be a little more mindful about my intake because I'm, I'm way overeating. Like the scenario we had CC, if I'm way overeating, all the desire in the world doesn't mean anything without the proper action behind it. All right? So you come in, you're putting in work right now, you're getting it done, your condition's gotten better, your strength's gotten better, all that's improving. But now, if I have a pie, not a food pie, it's like a pie, like a pie <laughs> if I got a pie and I break this joint down into thirds, All this right here, actually, mm, probably a little further, not even thirds. This here is probably 30%. This 30%, this is 70%, right? This 30% is my training, my nutrition, all the positive thoughts in the world. <laughs> all right, this 70%, nutrition. If this is the overall system of everything that I'm doing, my cardio, my training, all that is up here. That's 30% of it. That's why it's, free, it's very hard for you to out-train your eating because your food weighs so much more. In the grand scheme of everything, your food has so much more impact on everything else than all the training in the world. You come in here putting in three workouts a week, you go to the cardio three workouts a week as well. So you're doing three hours of work per week, training-wise, cool. Your body responds to what you eat 24 hours a day. So see, I'm training an hour every single day. That's seven, seven hours out the week. How many hours are you spending to what I'm eating? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this holds so much more weight. But that's why this is also much more mm -hmm. not as desirable thing to do because it's so subtle. Because you don't realize how little decisions that we make from day to day. I'm just going to stop by while we're real quick and grab X, Y, and Z. No big deal. I'm going to grab a breakfast sandwich real quick. But that breakfast sandwich from the store versus something made at home, two different things. Mm -hmm. The impact. Remember, the impact is different. So that's why the food weighs so much heavier. That's why this 2,000 calories, where it comes from, is going to impact the whole story so much more because it carries so much more weight. Whether you want to accept it or not, it's the reality of it. And that was the biggest shift I had to make because that's my wife. I was trying to train like crazy. I'm over here doing two hours of cardio a day. On top of my strength training, my strength training would be like an hour, hour and a half, and I'll do two hours of cardio as well. I'll start my day with an hour of cardio train midday and end my day with another hour of cardio. I did that for weeks and months on end just to get to my goal because I didn't know any better because I didn't want to take care of the food as much. But the more I started tightening up all the food, I'm going to do so much less cardio now than ever before but I still get better results now than I have before because I understand I'm giving my effort to what matters more. Just because you want to say this is important, more important than that, doesn't mean it's going to make it more important than that. Just because you make something important doesn't mean it actually is in the actual game, in the game. What was I thinking about this morning? My wife and I like playing Monopoly. It's been a while. I haven't beat her in a while. So she's, <laughs> it's, she's, it's, it's coming. It's coming. So, on there. After, once you first pass go, who plays Monopoly? You play Monopoly? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Once you first pass go, this is two properties. It, actually. Oh, you're, you're, okay. We're going to change that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is oh. two properties. But you know what they are? The first two properties, like, it's like Baltic or Industrial. Park Place. No, not, not when we first passed go. The very they're the, the cheapest properties on the board. Oh, like Baltic. Yes, yeah, so it's like Baltic Avenue. It's the cheapest property on the board. And the other side of go, you have um, what is it? Boardwalk. You got the boardwalk and something else, which is the most two expensive right. properties. Now Hard your place. goal, you want to have you want to have this expensive piece of property built up because someone lands on you get paid out something beautiful. You know, right, baby? Yeah, you paid out. <laughs> but now, you can fight all you want to get Baltic to get these places that aren't as important. You can build them up as much as you can, but even when you build them up to the max, the payout on things are weak. Just because you want to make it important doesn't mean it's actually going to be important to the game. If you own that and nothing else, you're going to lose. That's the reality of it. That's how the game is set up. So you have to understand the game better. This is the game. You can try to change the rules if you want to, but the rules have already been set. You're already in this physical body, so boom, these are the rules. These are how the game is set up. So now, let's learn how to play the game better and become more strategic at playing the game.
get more mindful of the foods you're eating, when we're having them, and so on and so forth. Your hydration levels, your sleep, your training, all these things work together. But remember, this battle is won and lost in the kitchen more than anything else. All right? Go that uh, 2030 calorie goal, would that be just to maintain but your weight but get your body healthier, or would that be a weight loss goal? And but also the health go along, go along with that. Now that's why I'm a big advocate of, of having a cleaner diet because for me, my goal wasn't health. I, could, I was that really real honest, even right now. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed my health, don't get me wrong, but 